windy day like today, I think may have a lot of us thinking about fire danger. Definitely one of my first thoughts in just over two years after the Marshall Fire, we continue to learn more about what really happened that day. New research shows that a massive windstorm with speeds re equivalent to a hurricane was to blame for the fire's devastating spread. And Denver 7's Colette Bordelon live downtown Denver tonight. Colette, you spoke with the authors of that research paper. Guys, they told me that NOAA tracked winds at around 100 miles an hour that day. Like you guys said, that is hurricane force winds coming right down off of the mountains, and they were sustained for nearly 11 hours. New research from inside NOAA. The night of the event. Started the moment the Marshall Fire did. That's sobering in that way and gives us yet more motivation. Scientists Stan Benjamin and Eric James. There's lots of other places in the U.S. that get downslope windstorms, but maybe none with such a population density as here along the Front Range of Colorado. Have been studying the wind from that day that blew for nearly 11 hours without stopping. They were hurricane strength winds. You know, it was over 75 knots. It was sustained. You guys really see the Marshall Fire as being more of a wild windstorm after seeing some of these results. We do. We, we, it was, it, we had, you had to have that very strong wind, both for the spread and actually for the ignition. Was this at all caused by climate change, these crazy winds that we saw that day? We would say the windstorm itself, the frequency actually may be going down to have more of these drought conditions that might lead us to be a little more vulnerable for fires uh, that may be going up. The two examined the forecasting challenges presented by the Marshall Fire in their research, hoping to improve their models for the future. There are these catalyst events that occur every now and then. Sadly, it takes often a really severe event to get people's attention and make them realize that we have work to do is to improve forecasts of these situations. Saying that even though the models on the day of the Marshall Fire were correct, new tools should give them more accurate results, along with more time between the forecast and the predicted weather events. We like the science challenge, but we also, it's serious. It's serious stuff. We have a chance to be able to improve our forecast for these critical decision-making situations I, and, and we need to do more of that. Research motivated by natural disasters to better prepare for the future. Working with the National Weather Service, those from NOAA tell me there could be changes coming to the criteria for a red flag warning. One was not issued on the day of the Marshall Fire. They want to see red flag warnings accommodate for humidity at all times of year versus just focusing in on those warm fire seasons. They also say something we could see in the future are fire warnings issued by the National Weather Service, similar to tornado warnings that would let people know when they have to evacuate. We're live in Denver tonight. Colette Bordelon, Denver 7. Today, none of us will ever forget. Colette, thank you for that.